Hey, what's happening, FTD fam? There have been several similarities that I've noticed in Islam and Christianity. And, you know, I'm more familiar with Christianity, of course, because that's a religion I grew up in. But as I decided to step away from religion and start learning about other religions, especially Islam, I've really started to notice quite a lot of similarities, not just necessarily in the teachings, but just in the way people operate within the religion. The first thing that I noticed, the belief in one God. There's a whole lot of debate about this, guys, because um, Muslims see Christians as believing in three gods because uh, the majority of Christians believe in the Trinity concept of God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. But literally, you know, in growing up in Christianity, there's not, it's not teaching the, the three gods. It's actually one God, but manifesting in three different ways. It's actually not three different gods. You know, Jesus is God, the Holy Spirit is God, the Father is God, all at the same time carrying out different roles. But Islam though, they really, really, really stress the belief that God doesn't operate like that. God doesn't manifest in multiple different ways. God is God, there's no trinity, there's nothing else associated with God, there's no images of God or anything like that, no visible form of God that can appear to people and say, hey, look guys, I'm God. There's, there's none of that, but that's the belief that they want to teach people that there's one God. And now Christians want to teach people that there's one God, but it's just this one God operates different than the Muslim concept of God. So we still see that the concept of one God still exists and this is a big point in both religions. It's a huge similarity showing and teaching the belief in the one true God. Now the next thing that I notice that is very similar in Islam and Christianity is actually that lifelong friendships can come out of the religions. So there are people in my life right now that I met through my time in Christianity and we're still good acquaintances. Like, you know, we still keep in touch. We still have love for each other. And uh, that's a great thing that I that I really love just about the church community is that you can have lifelong relationships, have some deep, close family connections and friendships. And this is also something that I've been noticing when it comes to the Muslims that I'm have been speaking with and uh, just observing the Muslim community there is a huge amount of just uh, friendship and community and support and fellowship you know going over to another fellow Muslims house or fellow Christians house for lunch and just hanging out you know I I've noticed that it, that's a big part of the religion and I think this is one of the major appeals for these religions is the community that comes with it. Just the support community, you know? There's been so many times where people from the church have called to just support and just share well wishes for me and, and my family, especially going through rough patches. So it, it makes a big difference just to have that sort of support system. Now, the next thing is, and I fully understand this, this deep-rooted conviction that your religion is right and that is it period there's no options for anything else and generally of what i've been noticing is that this all falls down in interpretation of the religion why do i say that because in christianity there's thousands of different denominations all preaching from the same bible but all claiming that they just have that one thing that makes it the true religion. And Islam, there's not as many denominations, but there's various different uh, beliefs and schools of thoughts all under the umbrella of Islam. And they believe that theirs is the right one. And you can't, you can't really shake that mindset, that mentality. It's just, it's so firm and, and deep. You know, uh, I mean, speaking with Christians, just talking about, you know, the sacrifice of Jesus, Jesus dying for your sins, that is like a pretty much unmovable belief system in the minds of Christians. 
and the belief system in the minds of Muslims is is one God, Islam is a true religion, Muhammad was the final messenger and it is so deep rooted. And most people actually don't view that as a similarity. It's just oftentimes viewed as, oh, that person is deceived, that person is 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 wrong. Uh, I'm correct, you're wrong. And it's like a tit for tat, back and forth argument. But it's actually a similarity that you are so convicted and sure of your religion because of your experience and uh, what you've been taught, what you've seen that you're convicted that it is right. Now, the thing is, it may be right for you, but someone else may not see it that way. But uh, it's still a big similarity in the mindsets. You can't convince a Christian, you can't convince a Muslim otherwise. The similarity at number four is the big stress of the end times, like the world wrapping up and uh, there being a time where a savior in some form is gonna come and uh, God is gonna end the world and then take everybody to paradise or recreate the world. Some way, shape or form, there's a lot of talk about the end times. Like this, this world is not the final destination for humans. There's actually a hereafter, something coming after this, the afterlife. And you know, when it comes down to it, a lot of uh, Muslim and Christian end time events, they're very, very similar pretty much exact in many cases. So there's really no big dispute in the end times when it comes to Muslims and Christians. They believe that it's gonna happen and uh, this world is just temporary and there's better, a heaven, a better life to come. And the final big similarity I've really noticed in Islam and Christianity is that there's a firm belief in the power of prayer and there's a lot of stress over praying and being connected with God but not just being connected to God for your sake but also for the sake of other people. So we know Muslims pray five times a day. This is the obligatory prayer that Islam has. Christians aren't necessarily as structured in their prayer regime, but there's a, there's a teaching that goes pray without ceasing. So you're being continuously in a state of prayer, not just for yourself, but also for the people around you. So I see there's a lot of emphasis in prayer. Prayer is continual. Prayer doesn't stop. It's pretty much every day, an everyday action. And why do Muslims and Christians pray? For various reasons. Like I mentioned, there is uh, obviously the connection with God, but also for the betterment of other people, uh, the blessings of other people, praying, you know, to help develop uh, a faith mindset, more of a belief and dependency of God, various different, various different reasons. But, you know, I couldn't do this video without mentioning that similarity there. There's such a huge importance of prayer in both of these religions. So those are just five similarities that I wanted to share in, in this video. Of course, there's a whole lot more. And uh, again, some of these similarities are really just in the mindset. I'm starting to really notice how similar Muslims and Christians are. Like it is so mind blowing guys, honestly. All right, so that's it for me in this one. I'm gonna continue my journey and uh, stay tuned for more videos where I share my thoughts, uh, more top five videos where I just break down what I've been learning when it comes to religion and spirituality and also sharing my experiences. It's been awesome so far, this journey with you guys and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Later.